In today's video, we're going to learn about async throwing streams in your Swift project, a way to write concurrent code in a pretty graceful way. Let's start by opening up Xcode, and we're going to be working in a playground. So I'll create one of these and creatively call it async throwing streams. Before we start writing out our example, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and let's talk about async throwing streams. So essentially what this allows us to do is write out a function with the new async await pattern introduced in Swift 5.5, and it takes care of the uh, situation where you have closures with continuous concurrent callbacks. So think about a downloader that reports to you progress of a download. Maybe it finished after, you know, zero to 100% progress or it failed uh, or things in that type of category when it comes to concurrency. So let's write out a basic downloader so we can actually model this and then we'll extend this to use async throwing streams momentarily. So imagine you have a file downloader, or maybe we'll have a, let's call it a service to be a little more generic here. And let's say inside of here, we have a state enum, and this state enum can have two different cases. Maybe we'll have finished, or maybe let's call this completed. And this, if it completes, we'll get some data back. And then maybe we have some in progress handler as well. So we'll say in progress, and we'll have a float in here. So essentially we should get 0.0, .0 to 1.0, so 0 to 100%, and perhaps we'll be updating our UI from that uh, float that we get back. Now we also would want a function in here, so we'll go ahead and create perhaps uh, fetch data. Now fetch data is gonna take three arguments. It'll take a URL of type URL, super creative, I know. We'll take a progress callback, which will be a uh, callback, not surprising. And this is going to give us basically float returning void. This should be continuously called while our data is downloaded. And then finally, we'll have a completion block. And this completion block will return to us the data uh, or an error based on whatever ends up happening. Now, because we want both, we're gonna leverage the generic result type so we can wrap this nicely within here and return it respectively like so. Now this function presumably can also throw an error uh, in the real world, it's pretty common. So we're gonna also mark this function as throws since it can indeed throw an error and the caller should take care of you know, gracefully handling that thrown error. So traditionally, the way you would go about calling this is pretty simple, right? You would create a service like so, and then off of the service, you would actually go and call uh, the function. So we'll say here service, and we want to say, what did I call it up here? Fetch data. So we'll go ahead and actually call fetch data. Let's see, let's see why this is yelling at me. So this should automatically give us a constructor, but if not, we'll go ahead and add it like so. And we'll say here, fetch data. And if it's not auto-completing for you, there might be some silly reason. So let me go ahead and call this my service. And let's instantiate this down here, like so, my service. And let me just give this a run so my playground decides to get its life together. And then we'll dig into async throwing streams. So once you've got this created here, this makes a lot of sense, right? Traditionally, the way this will work is, let's try this one more time, service dot fetch data, there we are. So we would pass in a uh, you know, URL like so, and then we'd have a progress callback. So we'll say progress in, and then presumably you would update some UI. And then here we would have result in handling said result. So this is the traditional way of doing it. And we want to use async await to model the same functionality. And this is where we'll introduce async throwing streams. So async throwing streams basically allow you to do the exact same thing in a more elegant way, debatably. So let's go ahead and introduce a function. Maybe we'll privatize this fetch data and we will create a public function in addition to this here. And we'll call this uh, just fetch. And we'll take in a URL of type URL and that's basically all we need. Now we want this fetch to return to us a async throwing stream. So let's see if autocomplete can do its job today. There we are. And this async throwing stream is a generic as well. And we basically want to specify in addition to an error, what is going to be returned uh, whenever uh, there's a yield. And we'll talk about yields momentarily. So we're going to have it return our state, which is an enum with associated values right here that we've declared or a error. 
Now this is yelling at me because we're not actually returning this, so let's go ahead and do that. So here we are going to say return an async throwing stream, which takes a continuation in, and this continuation allows us to continuously deliver events to the actual caller. And that's very similar to how the callbacks here would do their job. So inside of this, what we want is a do catch block because we are about to call this fetch data API, which again can throw. So we wanna make sure we take care of the thrown errors. And here we can say try fetch data, URL will just be URL, pretty simple. And we now need to implement the progress callback as well as the completion. So progress callback gives us some progress. In this case, we get a result in this callback. Now we want to actually deliver this to our caller and we're gonna leverage this continuation thing up here to do so. So the way we do this is we say continuation, we are going to yield, so if I spell that correctly, we're gonna yield and we're going to specify a state which will be in progress passing in the progress which is of type float now how did it know to specify in progress or completed here it's because we've specified the generic type of this to be a state which is our uh, declared enum up here so that's how we handle that and similarly what we can do down here is we can switch over our results in a success case we'll get some data in the failure case, we'll get an error. And we wanna, once again, yield in the success case, but there's one additional thing we want to do here. So what we wanna do is first, we're gonna say continuation, we wanna yield, and what this is going to be is completed with data. But on this continuation, we also want to call finish. So we're gonna say continuation.finish, just like that. And you might have already saw in the autocomplete there, if an error does occur, we don't just want to, you know, just get rid of the error and ignore it. We want to call it uh, yield on it and return it to our caller to appropriately handle it. Now, we don't actually want to yield it directly. What we want to say is, hey, continuation, finish yourself and throw the error up the call stack. So we're going to basically once again finish and in, in addition to that, call this error uh, to be thrown back up the stack. And we're going to do the same thing in the catch here in case... Uh, this function itself, the fetch data API that we added, has thrown internally uh, since this function is marked at, as throws as well. So this is how you can convert a closure-based API to the async await model, which will leverage a async throwing stream to provide the same functionality. Now on the caller side, you would have a task and you can wrap it with a await call and you would call await uh, fetch here. And on the async throwing stream that is returned, you can listen to the continuation yields to figure out what data you are getting back. And of course you can tie that to some reactive UI to perhaps fill a progress bar or move a spinner or maybe show a check mark if you get data back, so on and so forth. And that's basically async throwing streams in a nutshell. I've actually used this only once. I thought it was pretty clean how this API was actually written. No weird like for loops or, you know, hodgepodge usage of combine, um, though it is very similar to those reactive models and frameworks. So it's pretty easy to pick up if you're familiar with using them. But that is all I've got for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like down below before you click away. Leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. And let me also know if you're using async await and combine. I'd love to know. Subscribe if you're new here. Share the channel on Twitter. Connect on LinkedIn. All the socials. You guys know the drill. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.